What's up, traders? Anthony Crudelli here, and welcome to the Futures Radio Show podcast. In today's episode, we're joined by Ripster. He's a seasoned momentum trader, the inventor of the popular Ripster EMA cloud system, and founder of the Tenet Trade Group. Join us as we dive into Ripster's systematic approach to trading and learn how his EMA cloud system keeps you on the right side of trades. We'll discuss the crucial aspects of trading with the trend, identifying trending versus choppy days early in the session, and adapting strategies for different market conditions. Ripster will also share key advice for traders who often find themselves fighting the trend. Whether you're a day trader, swing trader, or a long-term investor, this episode is packed with valuable tips to enhance your trading system. Let's get started. Today's podcast is sponsored by TradeStation. As a futures trader, you can leverage your portfolio even more thanks to TradeStation's reduced margin rates across popular futures products. Enjoy intraday rates as low as 10% on select U.S. index futures. TradeStation is also cutting margin rates in half for popular energy products, crude oil, heating oil, gasoline, and their associated minis. Open an account today and access over 600 CME Group futures products and customize your trading strategies on a sophisticated platform built for advanced traders. Visit tradestation.com slash Anthony to learn more. Ripsters in the house. What's going on, my friend? Thanks for hey, coming Anthony. on the show today. Good, good. Thank you. Thank you for having me over, man. Really honored. You know, I've been following you for a lot of years. I'm excited. This is actually the first time we've ever spoken. And it's funny. I feel like we we have a relationship because we've t- chatted, you know, through Twitter, through X so many different times. And when I think of the Ripster, I think of Momentum Trader. I think of uh, Trading Psychology. I think of Educator. I think of the EMA Cloud System. Yeah. So there are yeah. traders out there that are new to you. What's who is Ripster? <laughs> well, Ripster is um, first of all inventor of EMA Cloud System that has uh, changed thousands of lives. I mean, made consistent traders, and I would like to call myself an educator more than a trader because uh, that's ha- has been my passion. You know, I, I probably think um, I'm one of the you know good educators out there. I teach people from heart, not just to you know sell something. So. That's what I believe in. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, there's several traders out there that I have talked with uh, that said that you were their influence. And I think that's pretty cool when, when, you know, even to get a handful of traders just that I've spoken with to to say that about you, I think that's that's very cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you know, I have been uh, just a little blessed because uh, for me, it's always been being straightforward, having uh, good relationships, just like you, you know, um, the way I talk to you, you were always so pleasant, always, uh, you know, uh, very, uh, very warm in your, uh, you know, comments and the interactions. That's why I have been with everyone, right? I have always answered hundreds of DMs and all that. So built like a good repo and good relationships with the trading fraternity. I think that's one of the uh, secrets of my success. Yeah, man, you're one of the good guys out there, and I'm really excited to get into our conversation today. You know, I, I want to start off with just the basics of your system because obviously you've had success. You've had success training people, teaching people, coaching people, and it's it's spilled over to not just those people. They have actually helped other people as well. So obviously you've created a repeatable process, which is something right. you talk about a lot. You know, I you, you know. I, this is the first time we're speaking, like we said, but just for me getting to know you, you're very systematic in the way that you speak, even though you uh, you do talk a lot about trading psychology. So we'll get into to both of those today. But start off with the basis of your trading system. Yeah. So before I start that, you know, I believe the reason a lot of us do not find success, those who don't find success, because we t- we have very money focused, money oriented mind. So we are never systematic. We are never goal oriented. So what I designed was, you know, we have to be systematic. To be systematic, we need some basic foundations. So those foundations for me have been my four basic pillars, right? The first is system. The second is setups. Third is goal. And fourth is risk. So now the most two important, when I keep talking about system setup, people are like, what, 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 what do you mean, Rip? What are you keep talking about? 
setups is what what I trade, right? What's my setup today? If uh, if Tesla was breaking out on Morgan Stanley upgrade today, that was a setup. And what is a system? So system is how I trade it. Now I know I want to trade Tesla, but how do I trade it? That's my second pillar. That's my system. That's my technical system. You know, um, you know, which helps me where to enter, where to exit. So, and the third one is, of course, your risk. That's your risk management, position sizing, how much I'm going to buy Tesla so that I lose this much. And if, you know, um, it has to be fixed risk. And then, of course, the goals, right? I teach people to take an Excel, make your goals, daily goals, weekly goals, yearly goals. So my trading whole trading system is based upon these four pillars. And when I talk to people, they come to me and they say, hey, Rip, I've been losing for years. And they just, even if they say, whatever we do, it goes the other way. I just ask them one simple question. What was the setup? Can you name me the last five setups you traded? They have no answer. They're like, uh, yeah, we thought that company is looking really good. Somebody on Twitter said this should go up. We bought it. That's not a setup. Unless and until you can repeat a trade or investment rest of your life you have no business taking that trade if i'm trading tesla today and if somebody asks me asks me yes can you trade it again then i can say yes next time tesla does the same exact thing that it's doing today next time morgan stanley has an upgrade or some other stock has an upgrade and it's doing the same thing. It's hitting my variables, it is hitting my parameters. I will repeat again and again and again. But for example, one of my strategy is psychological numbers. Simple strategy, I have been talking on Twitter about it for years. Very simple, 10, 50, 100, those are the levels. Anything when it's close to that and has a momentum, I use that as a risk. I take it long or short, works 90% of the times. Just today, we bought Chipotle. 50 bucks was a risk, went to 5120, and we will swing it if we see more basing at 50 bucks. So th things like that, I can repeat that 50 psych level setup or psychological setup for whole my life until you know until I live. So that's that's the core principle of what I do and what I teach. And that's a, either it's a technical uh, system, either it's a, my fundamental approach, like I do my growth investments or anything I do, I should be able to repeat it again and again and again. If I'm just buying something, I heard a news, oh, there's a good news, click buy. And it's up one, two dollars and I buy it and I sell it like after it moves 50 cent. That's fine. I made money that time. But next time I hear the news, I... I chase it, I will lose a lot of money. That's not a repeatable setup. You know, that's not, a, yes, a news can be a repeatable setup, but being emotional and having a FOMO is not repeatable. You know, I would, nine times out of 10, I will lose money chasing the news like that. So that's why I try to teach people differentiate, differentiate. That's why I build my EMA cloud system, my technical system uh, that helps people trade right of course then i have my setups which is different everybody can find setups that's not a problem but i fix my setup is based upon my system because my system tells me when i'm going short when i'm going long and if they don't show up i don't trade how did you come up with these four pillars of success yeah so you know it's, it's the same story because when i first started trading almost 10 years ago and then i kept losing 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 I was in every chat room. I used to follow a lot of people trying to figure out things. One day I realized that, you know, I, I just need to do something that builds, builds me my own conviction. I can buy a stock. Let's say Anthony told me buy this stock on Twitter and I buy the stock, but I don't really have a conviction. I will run around asking for confirmation bias, asking somebody, hey, do you think that stock is good? Anthony just tweeted about it. And maybe then I will go to stock tweets and see what other people are saying. I will never have a confidence if I'm just basing everything on what every, somebody else is saying. I need to have my own conviction. So find to find my own conviction, that's when I decided to start how to make a, you know, let, let's talk about our job, right? Let's say, you know, I used to work for a consulting company. I worked for all Fortune 500 companies. We always were systematic. We go to work, our client gives us this task, we do step by step and we make money, which is paid bi-weekly or monthly. 
and same was for trading. And when I realized that we have to be systematic, that's when I started coming out with those four pillars of trading, bringing everything together, either you're investing, swing trading, day trading, whatever you do. You know, it just it just stuck me slowly. And I used Twitter as my journal. I was always tweeting what I was learning. I was reading books. I was screenshotting and tweeting it. Whatever I learned, I used to tweet it out. And then slowly, 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 I built the whole ecosystem to trade with. And that's how I came out up with my four pillars. What's interesting to me is you took a corporate structure, which we know works because <laughs> the S&P 500, NASDAQ, they're all corporate companies that have a structure in place and they make trillions of dollars. Yeah. And you took that way of thinking and applied that to building your trading strategy. Definitely. Definitely. That. Definitely. It's and what's so interesting to me about that is, is that it's so smart because all the things you said are so true and where traders make the mistakes, they're jumping around, right? Rip. They're yeah. all over the place. Today, I'm long this, or I'm short this, or it's on the open. Opening range is the low. I'm long today. Oh, all of a sudden, you know, market's breaking out. I'm, I'm bearish, you know, and there people are all over the place. And most people just want to be in. They don't know why they want to be in, but then they want, they just want to be in. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where so many mistakes happen. And even though a lot of traders probably think that they have a strategy, they don't have structure. They don't have that organization that you put together. Yeah. And you can see that, right? We have been selling off for the last few uh, few days, a week. And the traders, which don't have a system, they, they come back ev every day and they'll think, oh, we are too low. A smart trader will look at his system. What is my system telling me? Are we ready to come back? Are we ready for a bounce? And you know, the other day, um, I was. It made me. It makes me sad when I see people losing. The other day, everybody tried to long it, and market fades, 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 because they are. And then I talked to hundred people on DMs. I was people like, "How you figure it? Figure out that we are going to bounce? We were buying, and we lost all of our money. Why were you buying? Somebody told me, "Oh, we were oversold. Oversold is is relative. That's not a strategy or a system. That's your bias." Right. So what, what, what you need to have something. I don't you don't need to use my EMA clouds because it's based off EMS. Use anything. We as a traders, a lot of new traders, they think if something is complicated, that's the holy grail. That's not the thing. You know, if somebody's packaging you something very complex, selling it and you our brain thinks, oh, that might be a good one because that's an expensive indicator being sold by that person because it has a bunch of lines on your chart. No, the simplicity is the key to the success. Either you are swing trading, investing, or doing whatever. Just like you said, right? <laughs> we we are we our mindset is anti trading. We just have to fight our stubborn mind. Yeah, let's get into the technicals a little bit because this is where I've seen a lot of your influence spread out across Twitter. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Sati. I think that he has built some indicators off of some of his, his experiences. Yeah, Sa him, yeah. Right? Sati, yeah. Uh, Sati has um, built most of his system, and uh, and he's very kind. He's very uh, humble to give me always gives me shout out the way he built his system based upon my EMAs and VIX and all this. Yes, you are right, and many other yeah. traders have built yeah. a lot of things from my baseline concepts. Yeah, Sati is one of my favorite follows on Twitter. I love that guy. Yeah, um, and. I want to talk about that. Uh, let's get a little bit technical uh, sure. before we get into the psychology. To walk us through the simplicity but effectiveness of your technical strategy. The first of all, one thing, the most important thing before even I talk about any other indicators is support and resistance and the price action because market is nothing but human human psychology, human behavior reflected on the charts. When we realize that, it's much easier to understand how the market moves. And that's where we come, the most important thing comes is support and resistance and the pivots. Market will always make a move up or down when it crosses a certain pivot, crosses a certain resistance and support. So that's the baseline of the system. Now, how would you use that, right? We, of course, right? Any system needs to have a support resistance and trend following. And the second part is the trend following, which the EMAs provide you. So that's what I use. So, okay, I know the support is breaking down, but is it bearish? Then the trend will tell us, right? The trend will tell us the trend system. Use whatever you want, MACD. You know, I don't, 
ask people to use what I use, but I, I use EMAs and I don't really just use EMAs. For me, the area, the zone between two EMAs, it's all a supply and demand. And that's why I use the clouds. And that's why, you know, my system works because I don't just base it upon, oh, we are crossing this EMA. Of course, some EMAs are very important because my whole system is based upon exponential moving averages. But when I share the area between those EMAs with the historical charts and the probability, the probability, because we are just playing probability in the market. And how do you find that probability? You have to have a, something that you can go back and, you know, back test. I back tested this for years before I was, you know, um, very confident about it. So we use EMAs to figure out that trend. Now that EMA can be a daily, weekly, one hour. I basically try to use 10 minute charts intraday, one hour and daily. So those three are my important EMA clouds that I use. Most of my work is based upon 50 EMA and uh, be it on a daily chart, one hour, 10 minute, I have consistently seen price making a move when we move through 50 EMAs or 30 EMAs, and that's what the cloud system tells us. So that's how I build the whole uh, EMA cloud system. So I have 30 for 50 EMA clouds, then I have five 12 EMA clouds that I use intraday, then I have 20, 21 EMAs. Everybody uses 20, 21 EMAs, then uh, big other thing is what happens is when, when we are trading, once we are trading intraday, we often don't look at the daily time frame. We are not looking at that today queues are, you know, queues broke 50 EMA the other day and it flushed. So I try to put a lot of my indicators, put that information on the daily chart, intraday chart, if you are day trading. So that's the whole, whole concept of EMA cloud system. So it starts off with the daily the market conditions, the market environment, right? What yeah. is the primary trend, right? And if we're above or within those clouds or below them, that sets the tone for you right out of the gates, first yeah. thing, right? Yeah. Then you say you look at support and resist us. Walk us through that. Are you looking at support and resistance on the daily? Are you taking it down to your 10 minute and then your 60 minute because it's 10, 60 and daily, right? Yeah, there's, there's, we can talk about, it depends. Let's say you, you want to day trade, right? When you're day trading, the most important concepts, I often, often tweet about it. The most important levels start from, um, although I, at a bigger picture level, we usually do the top down, you know, we look at the one hour weekly chart, one hour chart, then we come into time frames. But if you're just trading at a smaller time frame, the most important when the day opens is you have to look at the pre-market highs and pre-market lows, yesterday highs and yesterday lows. That gives you the smaller time frame viewpoint. But if you're really looking to swing something or you've, if you're really looking to find an, your investment thesis, then you have to look at the weekly, daily charts. Because sometimes I don't really need to go on the weekly or daily for the intraday moves because the moves are enough. I use a a ATR. Again, you know, there's a, so many concepts. So we already talked about system. Then I have a bunch of repeatable concepts like um, my famous VIX concept, um, 10 a.m. concept for intraday trading. Then we have these concept of uh, the pre-market highs, lows, and that's how I identify chop in the market. And so those are first. But to answer to your question, the, the bigger the level, as we know, the better, better the breakout or the breakdown. So you always do top down. That's what I would always teach everyone. Start from the weekly chart, look at the daily chart, and then you come you know, down for your for 10 minutes and the one hours. Let's talk about concepts. The VIX right now is something that obviously everyone's keeping a close eye on because it's yeah. starting to bump up a little bit. Start with maybe that VIX concept. Yeah. So um, it was almost five, six years ago, you know, I, I started to look into VIX, right? And again, I didn't look into, of course, VIX is a broad term. It's a big science, right? It's, I mean, I might only know 2% of how VIX works, but the 2% is good enough for my system. Because a lot of people argued with me back in the day, hey, VIX doesn't have technicals. And I argued with them back by showing them that how VIX really works, you know. So my argument started that VIX has support and resistance. I understand the all the option scientists argue with me that VIX doesn't really have support and resistance. <laughs> and I always argued back because VIX moves from levels to levels. When VIX moves to levels to levels, 
you can trade the market with the VIX in a very confident way. And especially when VIX is elevated over um, a certain level, let's call it a 16 level, that gives you a lot of opportunities. Like right now, we are in elevated form, elevated VIX. Last time the market was uh, going back, pushing, we, VIX went to 21. And for me, 21 is a huge level. Somebody will tell me that VIX doesn't respect technicals. I will show them these charts, right? So... 20, 21, these are always, always big levels for the market. And since the VIX crossed 16 or 15, I have been cautious on the market. I have cut all my swings and I'm waiting for FOMC, you know, what's going to happen, right? If VIX goes back into that range, that a bigger picture, then our swing environment starts, then our, you know, we can expect the market to recover. But I'd rather have a big push on VIX, let's say maybe 21, and we reject there and we come back. And if we look at the bigger picture, let's let's say we just go back, you know, you will still see that there's always a certain level where VIX kinds of rejects, goes back, comes back, right? It's It's, it's, it's always a great, great opportunity if you are a VIX trader, investor, you know, to hedge your plays or look for opportunities based upon the VIX. This is at a big picture level. VIX used to reject 30s, 35s back in high volatility days. We use those opportunities to swing trades. The, when you see this VIX um, doing this, right, right here, you know that market is going to be uptrend and, and you play level to level. How I have been teaching VIX for years, even for intraday traders, we all know that SPY and VIX is, is it's basically inverse. Then how you use that, how you use that to trade, it's basically once VIX breaks a certain level, most of times it moves to the next level. And that would give you ability to trade either SPY or QQQ based upon that. And for that, I mean, it's on my website. There's a bunch of things. For example, I talk about historical levels on wicks 18 20 22 25 28 30 32 and this is all from my back testing years of years of charting that i show this strategy right so i have so i have hundreds of examples showing that how wicks goes down for example you see how wicks breaks out here for 30 pushes to 34 and um, you know there there's small examples this intraday wicks was rejecting 26 here and the market breaks out First of all, everybody needs to know market is not random. Market is systematic. And VIX is a part of that, which makes market very, very systematic. How the VIX moves and how you can trade the market. If you see, we are breaking out on the SPY Qs and Apples and AVGOs and we are breaking down the VIX. All you need to do is get long on the market when VIX breaks a level. Whether you are day trading, whether you're swing trading or you're investing. It depends on your time frame. You still can use the VIX levels, right? to trade that. So um, so it's pretty exhaustive. I mean, I can keep talking. For example, look here. 30 is a big level on the VIX when we were highly volatile. Why did VIX bounce from third exactly that area? Why didn't it keep fading there? And why did it bounce $1 from there? Because it's a historical level. And I don't know the science behind it, right? You know, And again, like yeah. I said, I don't really need to know. All I need to know, where would I get a VIX pivot? Because we as a traders or investors, are just look, looking for a risk level. And VIX strategy provides us that risk level. And that's the, what we simply implement for all of our trades, right? If VIX is bouncing from 30, you know there's a rejection on the market. You know, we, we, we short the market. So it's, it's very simple, very easy. I kind of, back in 2020, 2021, I spearheaded this wave of using VIX on your intraday trading. Now a lot of people use it, um, you know, even Benzinga and all those kind of, they alert when VIX breaks certain levels. I still do. I do it every day. And um, as you can see, a lot of people literally built their trading system and changed their lives just trading the SPY VIX strategy. Very simple. Nothing nothing too complex. And, and I'm sure. You know, of course, you are more more uh, senior than me. You know, it's 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 easy and it's it's nothing too uh, complicated about it. I think the 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 main thing when we look at something like the VIX is when someone says to us, "Well, it doesn't, it, it's not technical." Yeah. Well, that's from their perception, right? I, I mean, obviously, you're going to get people that are trading options that are vol traders, and they're not going to be looking at technicals. I mean, I'm sure even some of them do. Actually, I know some of them that do, but nonetheless. I mean, 
they it's argue, a they argue, argue with me. Like, uh, yeah. you know, somebody like, who is a Wix expert, you know, Wix has a big formula and all that. They yeah. argue with me. And I, I was like, I, I don't care. You know, it works. It I think works. the simplest concept of what you're doing is you're understanding position sizing and it's just helping you directional um, when you're trading the indexes. Right, like you said, versus right. the SPY, the S and P 500. If the VIX is spiking higher and it's going back to previous levels, I totally agree with you. It has muscle memory, right? I mean, yeah. it has price memory. It goes back uh, to a lot of these levels that you see similar action happen there. And in reality, is if it does happen, you're prepared for it. Yeah. I mean, that's the bottom line: is that you know you're prepared for volatility to increase or decrease. By doing some homework on the VIX, I think you know if you're trading just the VIX on a technical basis, yeah, there's maybe there's yeah, you can trade there, UVXY right? and VIX calls it's, and all. It's that. a whole other story. Yeah. yeah, and we can always chop too if VIX is just stuck around that a certain level. We can chop, uh, you know, chop too. For example, this morning, my first thing when I woke up to my traders, to my community, even I tweeted, I told everyone if we were breakout of VIX 17, we will be have a we will have a bearish bias, right? Vix tried to break out, could not break out, and then went into the chop. You know, went came back to the support, went sideways, and the market chopped. There was no no trade because Vix rejected 17, and then it was just a bounce on the market, right? And we went on the choppy sideways action. So the key there, Rip, is so you can see the time thing here. is mm -hmm. if it gets above 17, you're anticipating. Uh, weakness stepping into the market and increased amount of volatility. That's yeah. what you're saying, you're right? Yes, and and to make my my trading a more, you know, just to make it uh, more higher conviction, I use other things as well because I'm not just looking at Wix. I'm also looking at the yesterday's level, this level on SPY. I'm looking at this level on SPY, not just the Wix. Wix is at 17, but SPY is coming at a one-hour support. And then you see 11.40. Right, 11.40, 11.30, VIX rejects 17 right here, and we bounce, right? And we are bouncing. There's a support zone here. It's not just the VIX. We also have a support zone right here. So those kind of strategy makes trading so simple and high conviction. Although we were in a chop today, I'm not a big fan of this. Once the stock is in higher and lower range, I'm not a big fan. I want to see it over the previous day high or lows to have a bigger trades. I'm not a fan of this intraday choppy scalps, but you can see the concept that I'm teaching. It works to the point right here. We never really pushed over 17 and we bounced exactly the same time. And it's so simple. People just don't want to see it. Yeah. You know? And I think it's extremely effective in this type of environment, looking at a chart of the VIX, um, because if it were to have gotten above 17, volatility can start to step into the market and all of a sudden you could have week long weekended long step in and do some selling and it's just it's just an important point to note that you're watching from previous interactions at that price level mm. and something that spills over into into the intraday and especially rip we didn't talk about this but we have the zero dtes and how important mm. that becomes when yeah. you have uh, a vix that's getting elevated are you watching any of that uh, with any of these, I know this is mostly for SPY, you yeah. know, SPX, but are you watching and noticing that with these zero DTEs introduction of them are pretty much across the board in a lot of these major indexes now yeah. uh, and how much of an impact that, that has had into your uh, VIX strategy? I try to keep for SPY and Qs, you know, I think there's a lot of noise on the flow. What I have learned from my experience and what I teach people is choose one or two things that work for you. Don't try to complicate it. So I mostly ignore the SPY and Q intraday flow. I might look at a gamma level. You know, there's a call wall, put wall sometimes in some, some cases. But other than that, I don't really follow too much flow on SPY, Q, Q, Qs intraday. I do follow the individual flow, definitely. And when I follow the flow, it has to match the trend. My flow is, if something is bearish and trend flow is bullish, I don't care because it's not a high conviction trade for me. If something is bullish and then flow is bullish, then I care because my technicals are telling me bullish, the flow is telling me bullish. So I stack the probabilities one on top of each other to get a high conviction trade. I think it's so important, Rip, because market environment, at least from my 
perception of trading supersedes any strategy. Because if I have a market environment that is supporting my type of trading, like you talk about trend days or what you like, and or, you know, you talk about how you try to get into full position in trend days. If you have a VIX, a VIX that's going higher or in a consolidation above an important price, and you get a day that potentially may look like a trend day, that may be not be a day that you uh, up your position sizing, right? Because you understand that that market environment is saying, hey, this VIX is not going any lower. I'm not going to get caught on a max long on a day to, to anticipate it's a trend day when the VIX is showing me this. Definitely, definitely. And you know, as I often tell people that don't have a tunnel vision, right? Especially if you're t trading the large gaps, look at the whole picture. What is the sector doing? And it, I mean, it. I, I get so surprised. That's why I try to teach again and again and again. I probably have done thousand tweets on this that don't get zoned in. You know, I see somebody who wants to long NVIDIA. He doesn't know to, to look at tech cues. He doesn't want to look at SMH. You know, it's, it's a, we can't do that. You know, for me, every day I want to look at, like just to set, if VIX is elevated and market is trending, in my mind, I will be half size. I often tell people in certain scenarios, only trade half size, reduce your risk. The system should not just help you make money. It should help you preserve money. And this is one of those things where I've gotten into a lot of conversations on this show, a lot of conversations in real life about Anthony, look at every time I up my size, I end up getting run over. I never pick it right. Other traders will tell me, look at Anthony, I'm just only going to be, you know, one uh, position size for all my trades because I never know, you know, when uh, something's going to work versus not. So there, there's, there is always that argument. And there's some really great traders I know that are on either one side of this fence or on the other. I'm definitely someone, I'm constantly adjusting my position sizing. Like I'm not gonna be in a full long going off of exactly kind of what you're talking about. I don't think this market environment is supporting full longs right now with an elevated VIX and just the way that my strategy is telling me right now, it's not showing me that it it's just aching to go higher like it was in previous months. So why would I trade it bigger? I mean, I don't care. I'd rather be long small and be right and make something than be long in a full position and get stopped out. So that's my mentality. You have a similar mentality. We talk about your four pillars and we talk about how systematic you are. You know, I've been taking notes the whole time and obviously throughout the time that, that I've known you uh, on social, I'm always kind of keeping an eye on what you're doing. Cause I, I trade mostly the indexes. So for me, I totally see where you're saying, like I'm very environment focused. Anyone that's followed me knows that. Yeah, no, I watch I, your videos. Yeah. Yeah, I, I am very environment focused, but the, the psychology that plays into being able to do what I do and what you do, even though we're discretionary, I think, in in the way that we think and the way that we operate, but yet we have systematic um things in place. And the psychology is where it becomes and makes uh makes really the difference. That's what makes the trader. It, talk to everybody about how the psychology plays a role once you you have these four pillars and, and how you get your mindset wrapped around this entire process, this entire system that you've built. Because it's is even though it sounds systematic in some of the uh, uh, the technicals and the execution, there is a psychology that plays into you cons being consistent with the execution of it. So from the psychology perspective, right, here's the thing. Whenever we are trading or investing, especially the new traders, we we need to look long term, right? I always talk about that uh, life is long. It's not just one day. One loser, one trade should not define your entire trading career, should not define your rest of your life. One trade should not. And often that happens. It has happened to me. You know, I have had a big, huge losses um, on one trade wiped, you know, many figures, but it's up to us to not let that one trade wipe everything out. So I always say fast money goes fast. Okay. Fast money goes fast. Slow money stays with you and fluke money goes away quick. So don't, do not focus on the fluke, focus on the slow, slow, steady, steady progress. Because when we come to the markets, I, I talked about in this, in one of my past interviews, any new trader investor, we always come in the market thinking about, Oh, we will make money. Yeah, we're going to make a lot of money, right? We come to the market with that mindset. Nobody comes to the market oh, with the mindset that 
I can lose money too, right? We are always thinking about we can make money. So we start trading. We get lucky with few trades. We, you know, we followed some big investor on Twitter. We, you know, somebody told us, told us to buy NVIDIA and NVIDIA went to the moon. But, and we, we think it's too easy because we are not focusing on the long-term psychological perspective because it's all, all our mind. The market plays games with our mind. It makes us believe that you know, we don't need to be systematic. We don't need to think long term. We just look at one day, one day, one day, one day. So, so we come into the market, we lose what we made. And then the reality hits, you know, because I came to the market because I, I think I'm going to make a lot of money, but I'm losing money. And then once you lose one or two, three trades, then you start chasing what you just lost. You don't care about the system. You don't care about your long-term success. Now you're just chasing what you lost. Okay, you made a lot of money in NVIDIA. Somebody told you buy NVIDIA and now NVIDIA is down. You've been buying it from 125 and you are down, even if it's, you know, uh, 10 or whatever, 10%, but you are down a lot and you are panicking and you want to make money fast, fast, fast. The biggest rule is if you lose, do not try to make that lose back right away make long-term goals because once you and put it on pen and paper i always tell everybody write on paper that in next one month next two month that's where i'm going and every day whatever you make write it i mean i do the full i i put a free um, my trading mindset webinar there's a big webinar on youtube i recommend everybody watch it where i talk about your mindset should be success oriented and not money oriented because once we go to the downward spiral anthony and then we forget about everything. We forget about that. What we really need is, you know, slow and steady process and repeatable process. We, we keep chasing money. And if we keep chasing money, we will keep losing it because we need to define our risk long term. It's, it's, I often say that stubborn mind is your biggest enemy because our fight is not against the markets. Our fight is against us, against us ourselves. If I'm making some rules and I'm not following that rules, I can't blame the market. You know, let's say we are taking a trade and the spy long and the spy comes back. I lose my money and I see a lot of traders crying. Oh, this market is a pump. This market is a scam. But that trader should look. Why did he lose that spy trade? What was the reason behind it? And he, if he says, hey, hey, Rip, I'm losing all my trades whenever I enter, long it goes down whenever i enter short it goes up <laughs> but here's the thing anthony only one thing you have to do take the screenshot of those 10 losers and you know and you will find a pattern there you will find something similar and that's what you have to remove and then try again and i always say few years of misery is nothing right if you're ready to give up one two years and your whole life is in front of you you can achieve any, everything i mean i have one of my interviews back in the day which a lot which really helped motivated a lot of people right i was you know i lo i was down so many credit i was down you know almost half a million all my credit was blocked everything was gone right but i didn't give up because when i finally realized there is something i'm repeating again and again and again another thing is we need to realize that just like I said, fast money doesn't go fast. If you make $100 every day, you look how much will you make by end of the year. And many people think, oh, this is just theory because we get aggressive. We have one, two winning days. We have two big investments going good. Let's say I bought SMCI and NVIDIA. They turned out good for me. Next investment, I go bigger size because I'm not keeping my risk same. I don't care if I'm making more money. You have to keep your risk same doesn't matter you win nine trades out of 10 if you lose the 10th trade and wipe everything off it's not going to work and it mess messes with your mindset you need to have sanity in trading another thing i always tell everybody if you are in a trade and investment you are stressed you should not be in that trade if you can't sleep you should not be in that trade you know do not focus on how much you can make focus on how much you can lose and once you train your mind around that you know, even small wins, small wins, it will help. And one last thing I will say, Anthony, if you are struggling, forget the money, forget the size, take, you know, just trade 10 shares for me, trade 10 shares for next one month. 
do your trades, you do your investments, you know, whatever your account size is. After 20 trades, look where you are. Are you positive? Are how many of those 20 trades did you win? And you will see rather than trading thousand or hundred shares and you're just trading 10 shares, you're profitable. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You might have made 30 bucks, who cares? But what will that will make to you is build a confidence in you that if I can be consistent trading 10 shares, I can be consistent trading 100 shares. And that's what you need. That's the enlightenment we need because bigger the size, bigger the emotions. So my biggest you know, request to everyone who is struggling is for one month, do 20 trades, 10 shares. You know, I know small account option traders have a lot of challenges, but if you are a bigger account option account holder, just trade two contracts. See how that works for you. You know, and then write down on paper, write, write on the paper why it worked, what was the setup, and how you traded it. And then you will see. I mean, it's it's not hard. I tell you, if 90% of the people who are losing, let's say they have 100,000 account, if they go to one tenth of their size, they will be profitable by, by uh, end of the month. Assuming they have at least some system, some system, even if it's one system. No, but you're so right. I mean, if people just slowed things down and were able to actually look at the repeatable mistakes that they're making and they actually would be able to see it in paper or see it in a journal, they would recognize that. They'd be able to go back and fix it. I've said many times that people talk about this number of traders, percentage of traders that fail or don't make money. They say it's like, you know, some people say it's 95% fail, 99% fail. And I always say, well, it's not that the one or 5% fail at making money is that they fail at making as much money as they want. They probably can go out there and make some money, but mm -hmm. they, they set expectations so high and they think so short term that they shoot, shoot themselves out of the market before they actually have an opportunity to make money in the market. And that goes back to really summarize everything that you talked about is that, if people really thought long term, if people actually slowed things down, journaled, got in with their real risk parameters, right, Ripster? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they were yeah. really risking the amount that they were actually comfortable with because you're never truly. Uh, I think if and you're it has to be the same, you you cannot and lose thousand dollars here, two thousand here, three thousand here. You know, um, you make make. Thousand here, two thousand here, and then suddenly you lose five thousand. You can't. Yeah. Your risk R has to be you're chasing same. again. Yeah, you know, uh, no, I put I a trading uh, uh, risk management webinar. Should definitely, you know, people should watch it. Just one example to what you were talking about. You know, I know a lot of people they try to teach finding the tops, and I'm so against it. That is something that when I see something losing on that, I lose my mind because that can be so easily fixed. Do not find the tops because by the time you try to find the top, you're already blown out oh, absolutely. for the trend reversal. You know, things like well, that, small it. things. The history of the S&P 500, we just had the top with it a couple of weeks ago. There's no such thing as finding the perfect top. I want to talk about Tenet Trade Group. Um, you've got thousands of followers now. Talk to everybody out there. Why should people go and check out what it is that you guys are doing at Tenet Trade Group? Oh, well, yeah. So. Well, definitely last year, um, you know, I, I thought a lot of traders told me because I, amount of education I have, it's not boasting because I, I'm proud of my education. Nobody has that amount of educational content. So I realized rather than throwing it out, I, you know, I have to make, uh, I made a goal. I want to have the biggest and the best trading educational community, not the alert service, not the signal service, but the trading and educational community. So I I brought all my teachings together, you know, I put, you know, I do webinars. I still do free webinars and then the recordings go into my community. And then I built a community based upon repeatable systems and repeatable strategy. Nobody in my community is going against the trend. Nobody is getting bagged. We have losers, we're very small, no getting, getting squeezed. And, you know, nobody is getting bag holding. Fixed system, you know, and people, are doing, let's say we were long Tesla today, you know, I keep giving you an example of Tesla. People are already long in my community and giving ideas. We have the biggest trading floor, the lower, you know, thousand traders sharing ideas all day. They're already long and they're sharing their ideas. And that's what, you know, makes me proud because we are not just saying, oh, long this because I like that. We long, we use the fixed, the, you know, the concepts 
of repeatable system strategies. And I, in my community, I provide so many tools, so many tools, because all the tools that you will buy out somewhere, they're all free in my community, all the scanners, option scanners, news flow, right? So I'm really building something great out there. We are actually our one year anniversary, right? I'm not like uh, too much, uh, you might have seen me, I'm not too much of that uh, business minded person, you know, so I don't try to sell stuff to people. Anytime I've never, you know, done that. But I really think I'm building a great community and you can see in our feedback, if you go to the feedback of Tenet Trade community, how people are improving. I got to tell you, man, you're one of the good guys. It was so great to get a chance to get to know you today. I just think, like I said, you're one of the, mo you're one of the good guys. You're, you're very thoughtful. I love your explanations. It's clean. It's clear. Uh, and you've helped thousands of traders. And so mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's an honor to know you. Uh, I, I thank it. you I so much it. again for coming on the Futures Radio Show. And I look forward to more conversations with you now. Of now course, I'm addicted to more conversations with you. Yeah. And Anthony, tell I tell you what, you know, you said so many good things about me, but it's all, you know, same to you because you are always so warm, right? That's why I was reached out to you, Anthony. Let's talk because you're always, you know, um, you have a good tone. You're always uh, putting out good content and always affectionate in your responses. And that's about, that's what it is, man. We, we, the money and all will will always remain, you know, doesn't matter. But the relationships, the brotherhood and everything, that's that's really which matters that, you know, long term. So thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Really honored, really honored uh, that I was able to come on your show and talk to you. It means a lot. You're spot on, Ripster. The relationships are what matter. And I look forward to future conversations with you, my friend. Thank you again. Thank you, brother.